Please so raise. Happy are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least, of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. Then I will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devils and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They all would so will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or needing clothes, or sick or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did, do for one of the least of this, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing and make the sign of the cross during the blessing of the Gospel. Please be seated. Magandang tanghali po sa ating lahat. Mm. Ang bilis po ng panahon, nakaisang taon na. We just uh, could look back last year when uh, our beloved Bishop Francisco San Diego passed away. And now, 
after one year, we find ourselves celebrating the Eucharist to continue thanking the Lord for the gift of eternal life bestowed upon Him. Just a short reflection in this celebration, knowing that we come together, break the word and break the bread, and realize how we have also Bishop San Diego watching over us. Sinasabi ko nga po, pag merong pumapanaw, may namamatay, namahal sa buhay, siya na ang ating Angel de la Guardia din. Watching over us, watching over the Diocese of Pasig, interceding for us, so that indeed, we can continue our pilgrimage of faith to the eternal kingdom. I recall when I delivered the homily for the funeral mass of Bishop San Diego, I identified three important characteristics about him. His boldness, his baldness, and his bigness. The bold, the bald, and the big, beautiful. No, the big, the bold, the bald, and the big Bishop San Diego. And you know, now, as we come together after one year, I was thinking, what is the context of dying and rising and the message still of Bishop San Diego to us? Let's start with the context of death. All around you, we hear the talk about extrajudicial killings. It is a hot topic, isn't it? We hear in the news, people getting killed for whatever reason, right and left. And then, we know that just yesterday, in Italy and in Myanmar, the earthquake that killed people and still suffering, people who are in the rubble and injured. Death is really scary. But then when we look at the gospel, this parable of the kingdom of God, when death comes at the door, here we are, the Lord asking us, have you been good? Have you lived out your life to the full? Then you can truly enter the kingdom. That's why I feel that in thanksgiving for this one year of coming home of Bishop San Diego, there is still a challenge for all of us. Because when we are at death's door, we are accountable to how we have lived our life in this world. And I have realized that given the human frailties, even the sinfulness of Bishop San Diego, he teaches us, he taught us three words to live by dun sa homily ko last year, tatlong B, ngayon tatlong S. Ano po yun? What it means to become a steward, what it means to become a servant, and what it means to become a shepherd. First, Bishop San Diego was the steward of the gift of vocation to serve God the gift of vocation to the priesthood and the episcopacy. When you're given a vocation, you must make sure from the moment you live your life in this world until your death, you take care of it. It is simply borrowed. That's why we ask ourselves, 
as Bishop San Diego was a faithful steward of what he received, the many blessings of life, of his vocation, how are we also? Because that will be asked of us. Have you become also a good steward of what God has given you? The second is servant. That's why we know Bishop San Diego. Servus Dei is servant of God. He served the church even up to his last breath. I cannot forget, even though I was not here because I was in uh, Kuwait for a mission, Bishop San Diego celebrated his Mass here given his deteriorating health. But for him, what was important, even to the last breath, he would give his life for his flock. We are called to service in many ways. Whether you're a parent, you're a child, a son, a daughter, you're a student, you're a teacher, you're a servant in this parish, ask yourself, how have you been as a servant? Giving your all to the Lord and to God's people. And finally, shepherd. We know how Bishop San Diego was a shepherd to us, to the priests, to the religious, to the faithful of the diocese. A shepherd would make sure, even though he has 99, the lost sheep he will find. That's why when he set foot and this diocese was created, the motto of this diocese, Ut Unum Sin, that they may be one, that we may be one, as a shepherd, one flock should always be there. There should be one flock, one shepherd, one shepherd, one flock. He was, in a way, amidst his difficulties and frailties, still an instrument of unity. And we ask ourselves too, as shepherds, have we lived that out also in our lives? Today, it's so easy to give in to division yung hidwaan, pag-aaway, paghihiwalay. Let us always work for healing and reconciliation. So brothers and sisters, as we thank the Lord for not only the gift of life given to Bishop San Diego when he was still living, but the gift of eternal life, here we are again, challenged by God to be a steward, to be a servant, and to be a shepherd. Our hope is when we are before the Lord and He asks us, have you given drink to the thirsty, food to the hungry? Have you clothed the naked, offered home for those who have no shelter? Have you visited those in prison even the elderly, have you shown love as a steward, as a servant, as a shepherd? We can honestly say, yes, Lord, I have done it. And the Lord will tell us, like he told Bishop San Diego, welcome to my kingdom.